Hello? Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And I'm very loud. So I will try to not to speak too loud. What is that? I would like to ask everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Muted. <laughs> I'd like to move on. Uh, the board will now move on to the public participation portion of the meeting. Yeah, turn it down, please. Roll call. Blues. Here. Disharoon. Here. Henry. Here. Holshauser. Here. Humbles. Here. Wagenbach. Here. Wisdom. Here. The board will now move on to public participation portion of the meeting. Dr. Dearman will begin the superintendent's report. Before he does, I just want to publicly say thank you to all of our administrators, including Dr. Dearman. They've really pulled together our principals, our teachers, our cooks, the custodians, everybody who's pitched in. Um, I know they're delivering meals. Uh, I just want to say we really appreciate you, especially Dr. Dearman, who has worked all weekend long, and uh, we, we do appreciate that. So. A lot of people can't say they can't hear you, Dr. Dearman. Is that better, everyone? Nope. Speak louder. <laughs> I'm done. That's all I have. Two for your request, and we're good. I just had a question. About the uh, you know the issue of grading um, with the e-learning period of time, uh, there seems to be some confusion among the students about um, and parents as to whether or not the grades that the children are getting for the work they're doing in e-learning is counting or not. And uh, I've heard different things, like one that it, it's because it's an act of God and the grades can't go down. And I've also heard that grades aren't going to count at all. So I was just wondering. Do we know the answer to that? And um... They're suggesting that you get closer to the mic. 
Okay, I can ask my question now. I think I'm unmuted. Yeah, you sound okay. Okay, so just the question is, is grading being counted? Um, is it just that it's not being counted or that students can't move down from their current grades? And if Governor Pritzker um, decides to extend the e-learning, will we have the opportunity for grading to count? Because I'm just concerned that students will not take the e-learning seriously and not do their work unless it's graded. So do we have any update on that? First of all, yeah, Mike seems to be picking up that. I can see it registering on my device. Is, is that correct? Yes, I can hear you. Dr. everyone. Can you hear me better now? Mrs. Berg said that the sound just came back. That was me. Okay. We don't really, we can hear each other talk. So um, microphone should be good. I think we're okay now. Um, if you didn't hear Karen's question, she was asking about with the Act of God days and the governor and Isby stating that those grades couldn't be counted against students. One, is that accurate? And is there a possibility that will change? Um, the answer to that it is correct. As I stated in the podcast I sent out, or the call with the voice attached to it. Um, as these are acts of God, as it currently stands, a student's grade cannot be diminished because of this work. And that goes back to the equity issue uh, in the state of Illinois. Not everybody has the same resources available to them. So I think the uh, plan with that was to use this time for try and work out a plan to for those districts that maybe weren't quite as prepared as we were to put together a plan so that if this is extended, they can begin. I mean, at some point, we're gonna to have to start assessing and grading students as we move forward. Now, they have not shared any of that information because as you can imagine, it's fairly complicated, especially when you start looking at uh, the, the wide range of education we're dealing with, whether it be special education, um, the high school, very specialized classes, vocational classes, it's a huge undertaking. So I think they're buying some time at the state board level and then looking to see if we're going to extend this closure. And it does happen, the indication from the conference call yesterday was that there would be some direction that we would be able to do some grading, but the parameters have not been released yet. And so can a student's uh, grades go up? They can go up, but they cannot go down. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, at this time we'd like to move on to public comments. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board? If so, uh, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? This concludes the public participation portion of the meeting. The board will now move on to the information discussion items. The school activity accounts reports are included in the packet. Are there any questions? The monthly drug testing report for Dunlap High School is in the packet. Are there any questions? Next, Mr. Wisdom will present information regarding an update on the Dunlap High School pool project. Mr. Wisdom. Thank you. Um, can everyone hear me? Am I being projected? Yes. All right, first of all, um, I would like to report on the work that's being done. Thank you. Um, I have the, the new HVAC system has been installed at the pool and I've been there myself. I've spoken to the coach. Uh, I've been told by the coach that the HVAC system is working tremendously. Uh, the feeling inside is 100% better with the humidity being taken, taken out, out of the room. It looks it's fantastic, it's quiet. Uh, so that, that part of the work's been going very well. I'd also like I'd to compliment like Tom Graham. He's gotten bids for us in the December board meeting. We were pro we approved certain amounts for for painting or for, for lighting. Ninety thousand for lighting, uh, but, but we said we would not include the ceiling, ceiling, so we expected that, that to come down. Included, included forty thousand for new LED lighting. Tom has bids of thirty six thousand two hundred thirty five dollars for painting the entire uh, pool area, excluding the ceiling and the locker room and the entrance hallway all of which are desperately in need of it. That amount also includes a new grid and ceiling, ceiling tile for the hallway and the locker rooms that are grossly uh, overdue for being replaced. And um, it, will, it will change not only for the pool area, but for the people who are coming into the pool area, um, not only our own people, but people from other schools. He also has, instead of 
uh, a cost of $40,000. He has new LED lighting in the main pool area, the locker rooms, and the entrance hallway for $25,310. So the total that hit for his work for those areas is $61,545 versus the amount that we had approved of $130,000. So he's less than half of what we had approved. So Tom, if you're listening, well done. Thank you. I can't wait to see the final result. Great. Um, we've also approved funds for new starting blocks. Uh, that basically, there's a chart, but not going into detail, our, our board opted for, of the four potential, potential options, options for dealing with the pool, we opted for the refurbishing. All of these things we've done so far, except for one, are things that we can do without worrying about going to, to the state and having to get a new permit, which might cause us to lose all of our grandfathering, which would be a nightmare. We simply we can't do it. The one remaining uh, item for refurbishing is replacing the lockers in the locker rooms. Uh, we had approved $40,000. We're hoping that would come in for less. Frankly, unless the board feels otherwise, in light of everything that's going on, I suggest just maybe, maybe that we table this for this meeting and deal with it at the next meeting. We've got other bigger and more important things to deal with. So I want to get a report on what the work that's been done so far, the work that Tom has done in getting you some excellent numbers on what has already been approved and dramatically, and dramatically needs to be done. The lockers are the originals are in horrible shape, but we can live with them for a while. So I suggest that we table this until the next we meeting. Come, come back to that at some point in the future. We don't have so many other things going on. Is that acceptable? Yes, very yes. good. Thank, thank you. you. All right, then. Thank you, Mr. Wisdom, and thank you again to Tom. Uh, those are very good bits. Information regarding the facility rental agreement is in the board packet. Are there any questions? Information regarding- I, I have questions. Okay, ma'am. Um, this is Desharu. Yeah, my question, can you hear me? I don't know. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reichner. Um, my question is about the pool. Uh, we have not in the past uh, charged a rental fee for the Dunlap Dolphins to use the pool, but we've made you know, a lot of big improvements to the pool and it's a significant savings for them. I know they have donated uh, some things in the past, but I'd just like to open up a discussion maybe on if we should change that and if there should be a charge to um, the Dunlap Dolphins who are be able to use our pool for free. Well, I know we discussed this uh, when we were talking about the pool and its condition. Uh, anyone else have any thoughts or discussion in that regard? I, I see here that it's listed for I can't 15. hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me at all? Hello? I can. I can, through her. Okay, do we charge the $50 now as I'm looking on the hourly rates? It shows that as 50, is that what we can charge or but do we don't necessarily? We currently don't charge for the Dunlap Dolphins. If you see right above that, uh, it lists the entities that are exempt. Oh. Okay. So other clubs that use pools, um, what's the other swim club? Uh, uh, pause. 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 I mean, they have to pay, you know, for a pool. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a, uh, a club that's affiliated with the school. It's a separate, I think, not-for-profit organization. Can you? Can, I don't you know what the up? rate should be, but I feel like there should be some contribution. Um, perhaps that's something we should table along with the other pool managers. I mean, here it's about the point, but is it something that has to be addressed tonight? Or well, I think they need for the facility rental agreement. I mean, I don't know, Dr. Dearman, Do we need that to be approved? It, it would be on the action item for next. I'm not seeing the messages that you, you got a it's message. It's under the chat box. Um, it does not have to be approved tonight, so to speak. 
Um, the board, can, that's why it's an information item. We discuss it, have conversation, and then before it's presented next month as an action item, if there's adjustments that need to be made, it can be made. So the adjustments do not have to be made tonight. It says here, does Dunlap Rec pay rent right now for facilities? Do they? Does Dunlap what? Rec pay rent right now for facilities? I don't know. I don't, I don't believe they do. This is Katie. I can answer that if you can hear me. Thank you, Katie. So they do not play um, pay rental for our facilities. I believe it's that that's in the facility rental agreement as well. Um, however, one thing that uh, I implemented a couple years ago was that if they are in our facilities when there's not a custodian there, they have to pay for a school employee to be there, but they do not pay the hourly rate. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would just like that maybe some somebody look at what are the costs and how much are we as a school using it versus the club and maybe even look at the DAC and how much, you know, those costs are and just analyze it. I mean, given our budget situation, I think, and the amount of money we just spent on the pool, I think it's a legitimate uh, request. And I believe that they have offered to pay rent in the past. I think they have. They have. Katie, can you hear me? This like wisdom. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, could you, could you possibly give, give us a little bit of a report on what other organizations pay to use our facilities? Sure, like you mean outside organizations? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, are there I just use the facility agreement um, that the board approves each year as an hourly rate to go by um, for the payment for any outside organization. Are we generating any revenue from that? I mean, is it a significant amount? You'd have to ask somebody from the district office for that. I usually start the paperwork, get the insurance on file, and then the money goes to the district office. So you must not have a, an abundance of people that turn those in then? We have, uh, I mean, different groups. I have a few um, athletic, that use the athletic facilities. I know we ha also have a few that use like our auditorium, our commons. Uh, you know, there's there's a variety of different organizations that use, and obviously I'm just speaking for the high schools that, that use our facilities for different things. Okay, well that would be something I guess that the administration office could look into. Okay, thank you. Are we ready to move on? Any further questions? Information regarding the middle school handbook is included in the board packet. Are there any questions? I want to say that I, I was looking at uh, both our middle schools and I noticed one uh, handbook, I think it was DMS, had a sheet where the parents could sign um, that this book belongs to or, or something like that. I just wanted to compliment them. I thought that was a really, uh, really nice idea. So, any other questions on middle school? Yep. I'm sorry, go ahead, Teresa. If there's an exemption from PE due to religion. Is it the dress? I think it's maybe coverings, you know. Okay. There is. Could one of the middle school principals um, answer Teresa's questions regarding exemption from PE due to religious reasons? Being excused from PE for religious reasons? This is Scott Lawson. I couldn't quite hear her question. What was it exactly? She was wanting to know about exemptions for PE due to religious reasons on page 35. Under physical education? Yes. 
that was uh, one of the things that the IPA model handbook suggested adding in for the current school year. So that's going to have to do with dress or religious restrictions from participating physically? Correct. That would be like, for example, um, we had a, some students talk about um, various fasts that may need to go on during religious times of the year. Um, so allowing students right. who, who are going through those things, those uh, times to fasting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Be able to, yep. Does that answer your question, Teresa? Okay. Thank you. Any further questions, Karen? Yes. Um, my question was, I was thinking there was something in there about adding vaping materials as things that were prohibited and I didn't see it. So I wonder if one of the middle school principals or Scott could comment, was that the high school and I'm just getting it mixed up or do you, do you have that language added as well? I believe it's in there currently. Okay, okay. I might have just missed it. And then my other question is um, regarding the grading practices, uh, since we're currently in the process of reviewing, I know the staff are in the process of reviewing the grading practices between the middle schools, I wanted to suggest that we take out the language on remediation and I don't know if there's other grading practice language and just have a line in there that says, grading practices are, are currently being evaluated and uh, information on the grading practices can be found at www. you know, whatever the website is. That might be a good suggestion for that way. If there are some significant changes, parents would have an idea of where to find that out. Yeah, I would, uh, I would certainly agree with that because that is a, a work in progress so why have a portion of it in there and just wait until it's all done and have one site where everything is located so i think that's a good idea to just remove that for now and then we'll put a comprehensive plan in once it's developed very good any further questions <laughs> all right information regarding the high school handbook is included in the board packet are there any questions on the high school handbook All right, this concludes wait, information. Wait, wait. I, I had a, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, for the high school, in there, um, I don't have the exact page number, but it has the calendar. And I've noticed in the past, people ask about uh, things such as when can they pick their computers up in August? This would go for the middle school, even the elementary as well, like computer pickup, um, the homecoming, the parade, the game, the dance, the last days to drop a class, add a class, change a class, PSATs, SAT, standardized testing dates. Would it be possible to put some of these, what I would call kind of the major events in that calendar? Because those are things that parents don't necessarily know. And if they're working and they have to go, you know, pick up computers, you know, they have to kind of plan for that. The people that can't just get off work. Is this something that could be put in there, these kind of really things a lot of people want to know? Dr. Dearman? So we've spent a lot of time uh, talking about our registration to start of school practices. And we've already communicated out some of those dates for the pickups for the start of school. So uh, I don't really want to put those in there yet, but uh, I can tell you they will be communicated. Okay. I mean, uh, and then, like I said, we've spent a lot of time with parent committee and with our office staff outlining a totally new communication process. So I feel really good about the communication taking place. A lot of those major dates are listed on page two of the calendar. Um, oh, they are? Well. If you scroll down past the original, if you go to the website and then scroll down to page two, you'll find a list of some of them, not all of the ones that you mentioned, but some of those. I, I just noticed and I, with Mr. Adrian if, or Dr. Adrian now that if some of those are in there, those are some of the questions I get throughout the year. They'll call and say, when do we pick up the computers? And if it's something that's going to be put somewhere where people have access to and they can plan ahead of time, I just think that will help parents, you know, yeah, know I think ahead you, already, of time. you already received an email about the registration process, two emails. In fact, uh, yep. a pre-registration email communicating the plan, a registration email, 
and we just worked on and finalized uh, dates for schedule releases, which will coordinate with Chromebook pickup. So that'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks and continually reminded. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, no Dr. Adrian. Yeah, no problem. Um, this, uh, any other questions before we conclude the information discussion items? All right, the board will now move on to consent agenda. Are there any questions or discussion regarding items on the consent agenda? Okay, um, that we'll need a motion to, to, she'd like to take summer projects off consent agenda so that can be discussed. Discussed when? Oh. Yeah, now. Oh, now, okay. I thought you meant like delay yeah. it for a month. And like, That's gonna mess up the bidding process. So yeah, okay, I misunderstood. Do we need a motion? Second. I move to uh, remove the summer projects item from the consent agenda and have a discussion. Do we have a second? Okay, Mr. Wagonball, thank you. Okay, removing that, may I have a motion to the consent agenda? As so explained. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented without the summer projects. Is there a second? Mrs. Holzhauser? Moved by Disharoon, second by Holzhauser. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Aye. Aye. Bluth? Is Mrs. Bluth able to hear? Well, we'll keep, we'll move on. Bluth? I don't see her in the list anymore. Henry? Ann? Aye. Humble. Aye. Wagamot. Aye. Wisdom. Aye. Okay, motion carried. The board will now move on to action items. <clears throat> well, are we going to discuss, are we going to discuss the, summer the summer project? Yeah, we can do that. I'm sorry. Let's talk about summer projects. Who wants to go first, Teresa or Karen? I just guess in, in light of the uh, economic situation, uh, we already were having uh, deficit spending and concerns with our EAV and with the coronavirus, I think you know, there's a great chance that we could go into recession sooner and have continued EAV problems. And so right now already this year, we are spending more than we're bringing in and that's gonna be compounded as our you know, staff salary and benefits goes up every year mm -hmm. and our income either stays flat or goes down. And, and now it looks like it's gonna go down uh, for at least another year or two. So in light of that, I think that we should look at a lot of different expenses, but uh, particularly for this discussion, the summer projects. And so I would suggest that we have a more detailed discussion of what's really, really needed and absolutely necessary and approve just those and not maybe approve all of them. Is there anyone else that has any opinion or comments about that? I would agree with you. We just don't know what we're going to be. And I agree, we need to take a deep dive into what is needed, whether it be safety, whether it be compliance, and see where we're at. And I don't know if that's a discussion for tonight or if we can have a separate meeting on those type of items where we're at with budget and what absolutely has to be done. But I think we're at I understand that as long as you, we're very clear, whatever cuts you make in operation and maintenance, those cuts are going to have zero impact on the education fund. You mentioned, you know, teacher salaries and th things of that nature. They're totally separate funds. So as long as you're aware of that, we're good. Along those lines, though, I, I think we should look at kind of our overall budget. And I would suggest that we start looking at potential um, reductions in, in expenditures across the board. 
So I would like also to have a discussion or recommend if other board members are interested, a discussion in uh, uh, potential reductions in other areas. All right, any, um, other, any other comments? Yeah, yeah the summer uh, projects. Uh, uh, and Tom started this at the end of last year. Uh, uh, things weren't quite as crazy then as they are now. If every one of these items is critical, is essential. That's one thing. Um, I suggest maybe we ask Tom to look at this list carefully, carefully. and tell us which one of these things are items that absolutely have to be done right now and which of these can be postponed. Tom, are you on the line with us? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, here. Tom, is that possible? Can you do that? And how soon could you do that for us? I can uh, probably go through and call through the list again um, in the morning. Uh, do you guys have any kind of a dollar amount that you want to try to stay around? Or, I mean, um, we were pretty diligent with the list. Um, when we put this together, um, there, I'm going to have to have a little, uh, let's say a lot more stronger guideline uh, as to what the board really wants to see. When you say just the things that we really need to do, I can go through the list um, and I can cut this down to really just a handful of items. Um, or if you say, you know, cut it down, we'll let you have no more than 600,000. Or I just need I need stronger guidance. Like uh, a re reduction by a certain percentage or something like that. He, he does. He will need some kind of guidance. And yes. As, as Dr. Dearman reminded, um, you know the the uh, maintenance budget is is far smaller, of course, than the education budget. So I can I understand where he's coming from that he needs some type of guidance as as to what type of reduction you're looking at. Yes. Maybe it would be a good idea to have a separate meeting, particularly since we can join remotely and go through each of the items and hear the, the background behind each one. So for instance, like on the seal coating and stuff like that, I know there's an issue of if we don't do it now, it may cost more later. So that, that would be the reasoning for that. But things like the DAC, the gym. lighting or gym floor are those things that can be delayed where it won't cost more if we delay it. Uh, or the parking lot at the back, you know, those, those sorts of issues. What's the justification and is there going to be a greater cost if we delay it? Uh, Karen, that's a good question. And I can tell you, I have pushed to get the parking lot uh, out at the DAC for the last three years. Uh, and it doesn't, this is really the first year that it's made the final list only because of the condition uh, what we have and this is a condition now that we're beginning to see throughout the entire district on all of our parking lots and travel lanes um, that's actually a discussion I was going to have in a month or two with the board to before all of this happened obviously but we need to really consider a program uh, over the next three years to start to mill and resurface all of the blacktop surfaces that we have because we are losing them very quickly. Uh, there, a lot of them are at their end of life now. Uh, and, and in particular, the DAC is, it, it has, we've had several accidents with the folks that drive our buses um, and that isn't going to get any better until we do something with either one, two, or the three areas where we park the buses or our employees park their cars and walk across these areas. So, um, if we can come up with some guidance for me, uh, that will, uh, I think that will streamline the effort that you want to take here. 
Okay. Mrs. Holzer, do you want to come down here? Or? Okay. My phone's coming up. Um, and this is this is what what I think we, we have a whole list here I don't have it right here with me but if we can prioritize that list based on certain criteria one would be safety two would be compliance um, and also if you tell us if we don't do it what does that mean? so if we don't seal the parking lot today or patch the holes that means it's going to be to a point where we can't do seal coating, we have to replace the whole thing. So if you can prioritize that, and a lot of times when, when I do things, safety comes first, compliance, anything regulatory, and then if we don't do it, what, what's the risk? So that, that's what I'm looking for, because we're gonna be in an environment where we're going to be questioned and asked, why did you spend the money? And perception's a big thing. I don't want to cut other areas of any education, and I know it's in different budgets, I understand that, but a lot of times perception's a big thing. So that's what I'm thinking from my perspective. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Would other board members be interested in a meeting to go over these uh, issues and also just general spending uh, and potential budget? Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes. Mr. And Ann would be interested in this as well. We can arrange that. Any other comments or questions regarding this issue? Okay. Oh, I add, hey, this is Cheryl. Um, I'm back on. So I missed a bit of the meeting. Um, we must have had Wi-Fi issues or an overload on Zoom, but um, I'd be interested in that meeting as well. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm glad to hear you're back. All right, the board will now move on to the action items. The bill list, treasurer's report, and the district investment report are included in the board's packet. Are there any questions? Could I have a motion to approve the payment of the bills, please? I move to approve payment of the bills in the amount of four million eight hundred forty-seven thousand four hundred eleven dollars and eighty-seven cents. Thank you, Ms. Holhauser. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Wisdom, any discussion? Roll call vote. Aye. Cheryl. Blue. Aye. Aye. Disharoon. Aye. Henry. Aye. Humbles. Aye. Wagamuck. Uh, very good. Any discussion? Motion carried. Okay. Approval of staffing requests. Information regarding staffing requests for the 2020 2021 school years included in the packet. Are there any questions? Dr. Humbles, could I ask that we table this under current conditions? There's still a lot of unknowns. So if we could table that until next month, maybe very that would be beneficial. Very good. Go ahead and table that. Do we need an official motion to do so since Dr. Dearman's requesting that? If there's no motion or there's no second, then there's just no vote and it's automatically. Information including the board packet regarding board policy three, colon four, five. Are there any questions? I, I have some on this one. Um, when this was first brought to us, this was before the governor issued his order that there were changes to the OMA that required us to be physically present. So now that that has occurred, I don't believe we need this policy. Okay, uh, anybody else have any comments regarding that? I agree. I think it's easier to hold a meeting now uh, than it ever has been. So I would not think this would be an issue. I, I see this as a worst case scenario contingency plan um i i think it's just re just being responsible if we ever were in a dire situation where some a decision had to be made you know very very quickly that we could get that done i know we can meet remotely but i've had this meeting set up for 54 hours and i still and nobody was to be here and i'm looking at six board members so if i need a split second decision I'm fine either way, but I have to go on record that I'm concerned. I just see this as a doomsday scenario. And if we're ever in that situation, I'd like to be able to act quickly on a contingency plan. And it's irresponsible, in my opinion, not to have one. Uh, I have to say one thing. The fact that there are six of us here, here probably indicates the level of commitment. Five of us are here. With all that's going on in the world right now, the other two are out there on the phone. I, I, I don't see an... Uh, Situation where this board will not make itself available to deal with issues that come up. Well, it, all, it also, hospital somewhere, 
I would still be on that phone, uh, making and, sure that, that, that uh, we were doing the things that we were allowed to do. So, and I believe with the with, with with the governor's um, order that we don't actually have to be physically present, and and I will say that we've had this board since 1960, 1916, and it's always managed to get things done through world wars and Ebola and the Spanish flu, and we've always been able to do it. So I believe we can continue to move forward with the way we've had it set up. And it didn't come through the ISBE either, and we haven't had discussion on it. So this is not our normal standard way of, of approving policies. Right. So I would agree with that, but I would also make the counter argument. These aren't standard times we're under either, but I'm fine with it either way. All right. How does the board, does the board agree that we can table this this time? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. I'd make a motion to table the uh, board policy three colon four five as presented. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Very good. And, and Tim both second. Okay. Information including the board is included in board packet. Do we need a vote? I'm sorry. Uh, when you table it, yeah. You don't. You don't. Oh, you, don't? you do need a vote. Okay, I know you're shaking your head. No. All right, roll call vote, please. Uh, wisdom. Aye. Ryan Buck. Aye. Blue. Aye. Fisherman. Aye. Henry. Aye. Cole Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Information is included in board packet regarding the elementary student handbook for the 2020-2021 school year. Are there any? Oops. Are you I'm sorry. I had a question. Can you hear me? I, I got cut out there for. Yes. On the student handbook, does it mention standards-based grading? As I was going through it, I didn't see that, but I know we're moving towards that through fifth grade. I believe it was in there. Um, is is there someone here who was on the committee for the handbook and the elementary? I didn't do elementary. I did. I believe it was they they addressed the one through four and. I thought it was in there. Yes, I think it was the standards uh, the standard based report card for kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. May I have a motion to approve the elementary before? Um, before the vote, I just wanted to explain, <clears throat> I'm going to vote no. I'm just very concerned with the standards-based grading and the reporting and concerns that I've heard from parents. Um, so it's not a reflection of the effort going into the student handbook or you know, all, all the other policies, but that's why I'm going to vote no. Uh, all right, we have a motion from someone to? Well, I, this is Anne for the same reason. I do not support standards-based grading uh, based on what I've heard and also with having four children go through. All right, I, Abby Humbles, will make a motion to approve the elementary student handbook <coughs> as presented. Is there a second? Thank you, Mr. Okay. Oh, okay. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Humbles? Aye. Aye. Wisdom? Aye. Blue? Aye. Fisher Room? No. Henry? No. Bolshauser? Thank you. Thank you. Information regarding the traffic study is included in the packet. Are there any questions? Could I please have a motion to approve the agreement? I, I, I have some questions. Are, there's two choices there. Are we voting on both? No. No, we're not voting on both. No, we need direction on which uh, proposal the board wants to go with. Well, there, there are a lot of things to, that we need to discuss. First of all, this is this is a traffic study that is going to be doing traffic counts. We don't have any traffic to count right now. And so um, we have to decide if we want to go forward with this now, if we want to postpone this until the fall. Uh, I think there are issues not only, no matter what, we have issues with our circulation routes, uh, the way the school access, um, what are some potential fixes to some of these things. So I think we have to make a couple decisions at this point. Do we want to do something now? If we do, how we want to do that? And, and then the third is, is who we want to do that with. Um, I know both of the, the main people at both companies. One is a small outfit, and I know Dr. Dearman got that 
uh, proposal, frankly, sometime before we started even considering uh, the possibility of a, an access from Route 91. If, if you lay these side by side, the one does talk about 91 and the other yeah, doesn't. Yeah, but, but yeah, Tim is talking right of the impact study group, and he says it does. Um, I think if we're if we're going to be laying these side by side, one is is clearly more detail. We're going to be getting more out of it. It costs a little bit more, but this is not is something we want to more time. It's this way too important for the future of our school. Um, so uh, the terror group says that what they would have to do is they're going to do this. It's going to be in traffic. Count the traffic. They would have to do an analysis of where our traffic is coming from and see what really it's looks like to coming to the school and how they're getting here and make the decisions uh, on traffic and circulation based, based on, on that. And then in the fall come back, uh, in the meantime, they can make proposals for us, but then in the fall come back and do the counts. So, so the first question is, do we want to do this now, now? Or do we want to wait? Well, I'll step in here. I'm sorry. Yes, why don't you come on down, Teresa? Okay. Uh, from my perspective, I know that we, we do not have any traffic and most likely will not have until the next school year, I'm guessing. I don't know that for sure. I'm just putting that out there. But I think we need to get started on determining where and if we can have that entrance and or exit off of 91. We know right now, and based on previous discussions, and I know Scott Adrian, I know you're on the phone, Dr. Adrian, that how many near misses do we have every day when school is in session and how congested it is so I think it's, it's from a safety perspective, we have to take a look at that now and get that in place. Now, of course, we can't do the traffic counts, but they can make some assumptions as long as that cost stays the same as on there and they do those counts then in the fall. But anything that we can do to alleviate some of the congestion and we know what congestion there is, I think we need to start on that now if we can. One of the things I'd like to see um, if we go forward with it is that, um, maybe it be the proposal be rewritten and that uh, we look at some other options uh, aside from route 91 i'm concerned with the cost of that and i'm wondering if we put an entrance to legion hall and added parking on the north side for students and you know divide it up where our students come in if we could significantly reduce the traffic on the north side maybe there's another option of doing two-way traffic i mean we, we've talked about a lot of different things so i'm just I would just like to see the proposal sort of rewritten so that it emphasizes that we would like to see some lower cost options and not just just the Route 91, which I think will be more. Aaron, I've already talk talked to um, principals of the care group, and that is included in their okay. proposal. Okay. So the other I, thing I want to mention too before we move on, uh, I want to thank Ann Henry and Tom Grimm and Mr. Wagenbaugh who came to the parking lot and tried to work out a few more clear signs uh, to be put up. Um, but I think, Anne, you also sent some uh, email regarding other ideas that you noticed that might be considered too prior to putting in a road. Do you want to speak a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. What I've seen from standing out there quite a bit is there appears to be too many parking spots for teachers. Um, the parking lot out in front of uh, off of Legion Hall Road, that's usually about three quarters full or two thirds full. And then at Dunlap Middle, the parking, I believe the blue spots, which is for teachers, are about, there's about 100. And I don't believe there are that many um, employees in the middle school. And um, one thing, if you, is what Karen said, if you brought some if you brought an entrance in, off of Legion Hall and had an ex extra parking spot there, extra parking lot there, that would help. Also, when you look at the road that goes on the north side of the school and then comes out near the swim pool, it's very wide at the front. It has arrows showing one way, but there have not been signs there. So that's in a practice has not occurred. And then you get down to the bottom and it's very narrow where the buses go. If you were to cut out some there, take off part of that swim pool parking lot, you could widen this area and make it a two-way road. And there you also could potentially alleviate traffic. And even if you look at going around Dunlap Middle, if that were two-way, that's again some way that you maybe alleviate traffic, have people come in, go straight, go all the way through to Dunlap Middle and possibly 
drop off there. But I'm seeing by moving some, even where the parking spots are for right now, like the teachers are taking up some of the spaces in front of Dunlap Middle. If you put them back behind the Dunlap Middle School from a safety perspective, they don't have to cross to get to school, but we're putting sophomores in that Dunlap Middle parking lot behind the school, and they're usually par um, crossing the road twice to get to the high school. So I just think from a, a safety perspective, we really need to look at traffic flow, which direction it's going, widening that road around uh, where the swim pool is, that we may be able to do a lot with what we have without oh, necessarily going off of um, Route 91 if we don't have to, because I believe that's going to cost a lot more. Thank you, Anna. I agree with uh, Mike in that if we do the study, they will consider all options. They will give us the most economical options. Uh, we, we all know that a, a road off of Route 91 would be fabulous, but we also know that would require a quite, quite, quite a costly investment. But I'm, I'm sure the traffic study people know that you know, we are a school entity and we'll be looking for the, the most uh, responsible and cost-effective option. But thank you everyone for but your- I will, I will say in response to Ann, I think all of the things that she talked about would be a part of this study. Okay, would be very good. good. Very I, good. Think what, I think it would be good though is to get to them of how many student parking spots we have and then how many um, employee we have and where they are so they can be aware of that. Yeah, the information you sent in has already been forwarded on. Okay, great. Mr. Wagenbaugh, did you have a comment? I think you made something by sitting down in a room with Dr. Adrian and these engineers are just talking about it. Tell them what happened in the engineering study. It might be a thing at all in the process. We're guessing what happened. Can Tim speak up or get near the mic? He, he, yeah. I think he said, I mean, that's nice, but this is pretty common sense, I think. You can count all the cars you want, but you know what the traffic count is going to work. So I would just like to see them talk about it. And they probably make a few changes just by talking about it. Maybe they wouldn't even charge us to do that. You know, pay 18,000 bucks to figure that out. I think they were making it way too big a deal. That's what I call it. Mr. Mike. I know, I know you like it, but uh, I, you know, I've been doing this for several decades of my life. And, um, and uh, I don't pretend to be an expert on, on traffic circulation or accesses. You know, I hire these people and, and I've always thought it was too expensive. expensive. <laughs> Honestly, but, but it is, they're professionals. What they do is different from what I, oh, yeah, I don't think yeah, either. I don't think either, either is cheap. But, um, so but, what's the difference between the two? I'm sorry, I didn't, I thought there was only one, so I didn't. I can't, I can't. Dr. Dearman had talked to one of them quite some time ago about just doing training accounts and, and analysis. Okay. They presented that, correct, Dr. Dearman? And then um, we started, there was a discussion about bringing in access from 91, but I was told that we can't get there. And, and um, I went to uh, uh, Rick, the, who runs uh, um, the second group. And, he said, why can't you? And I said, I don't know. The board members that have been here longer than I have told me they can't, can't do it. And, and so, so he's the one who's meeting with the Secretary of Transportation for the state. Who they have connections with. And I actually sat down in a meeting with him. Um, uh, and he went back and he said, I don't know why. But within a week, they had an answer. Then, yes, you can. Um, so uh, that's when the second board came in uh, to give us an analysis, not only but also considering other accesses off 91, off Legion Hall, et cetera, et cetera. And as Ann said, the, the parking lot. So anyway, I'd, I'd like to move that we table this because we're not having traffic anyway. Perhaps we could get some more information from these engineers on a just a one-on-one -on -one basis or with Dr. Adrian. Is there a second? Is there, a, that's a motion, is there a second? Um, I would second that. Any discussion? I guess I would like to hear it still. Some of the other start moving on to something like this now. I guess from Ann, this is Ann talking, if you can hear me. 
from a safety perspective, I have seen so much. I'm sometimes there four times a day, dropping off early, dropping off regular, picking up sports, picking up regular time. And I've seen, I've seen too many near misses. I've seen cars going the wrong way. I've all, I almost had a head on collision last summer with somebody going the wrong way towards Dunlap middle. I've seen trucks fly through and they, you know, they don't, see, they don't know it's a pedestrian crossing. I've seen so many wrong ways. I, I'm just really surprised that there hasn't been an accident. I've seen too much overcrowding with that student parking lot and kids illegally parking because there's nowhere to go. It, it just seems to me that we need to do something with a manual. There was a girl that got hit at the pedestrian crosswalk. I believe it was last week. I, I don't want us to think that we're safe because there's never been an accident. You know, so I, I think something needs to be done, if nothing else, then for safety. I didn't mean, if I can finish that, my, my motion wasn't to forget about it. It was that we don't hire the traffic study people, it was to do more one on one. Okay. So you think asking them to come out as a consultant on a consultant basis and, and meet with Dr. Dr. That might work with traffic. If you don't I'm not sure. These guys, how are they going to give us answers when they, they don't even, they haven't had a chance to study and look at professionals? They'll figure it out. Hey, this is Cheryl Blues. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm, this is a thing that, you know, I mean, times have changed and we don't have the traffic there for them to do the full study. But I can't hear her. You can't hear me? I can now. I turned it up. She can hear you. Okay. Um, but I, if, if we're doing the district office and we're going to have a different traffic flow and we're trying to figure out that parking lot, um, if, if the consultants can, you know, stay to the proposal, the cost structure, and do it piece by piece, I think that Echo. might be worth you know, pursuing now. I mean, I think if we're going to deal with the safety issue, we're going to be back where we were in in the fall. You know, so are you saying they can rework their um, estimate and and do it in parts? Is that what you said? Well, keep to their proposal cost and go ahead and look at Route 91, or you know, if there's another entrance that other board members would like to suggest, but. Um, I think they can work with that, and, and we're working with the district office at that corner. So, so are you in support of this traffic study? I do, I do. I, I think as long as they're willing to do it in piecemeal and go ahead with, you know, the separate entrance, because we already know that we have a, a huge congestion issue. I, I don't think they have to visit, you know. I, I think we can look at, at an, a different entrance place. Um, or have them study that, and if it's possible, then that goes hand in hand with the district office um, construction. So, so Cheryl, are you saying the company that Mike is uh, recommending for the eighteen thousand, or are you suggesting the other? Uh, yeah, I support that. Wait, okay. can you say? Are you? Sub I couldn't hear. She supports the company that Mike is recommending. Is that correct, Cheryl? Yes, I think we need to move forward. Anne, are you willing to support the company that Mike is suggesting? As long, I, I am, I just, I would like to see the, the contract just to be, to be a bit more clear that they're going to look at these internal potential changes that are less like including like widening that area around the, the pool entrance, you know, I. I guess, Mike, the question is, would they be the same ones who actually do the work? Is there any conflict of interest with the proposal versus the work, or the studied versus the work? Well, I just that if, if you make the decisions to do things like widening our roads, uh, bringing in new roads, uh, that's going to require a whole new set of civil engineering. Okay. It's very likely that that cost will be above $25,000, so we have to figure that out at that time, Ann. I, I, I support it because I just think it's multifaceted. You're, you're talking about a separate entrance for the admin building. We know there's safety issues. We know there's 
parking lot issues with where people are parking. We know people are going the wrong way. I, I think we need to get going with it. That's my opinion. And, and if, it, if somebody else could fix it, I guess my question is why haven't we fixed it yet? So we have a motion. I mean, we have on the agenda the study. So this traffic study we're considering. Is could, this could, I, could I ask one favor? Is, Dr. Adrian, you're out there somewhere. Um, could you weigh in on this too? I'd like to have your opinion on this. Which, which part would you like to have about the traffic study? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd love to see the traffic study. I, I think it's worthwhile. So. I'd love to hear the traffic study done. I mean, I think we can talk about it a lot, and, and we have done that. But I think, like we've talked about before, alleviating that pressure to 91 is the pie-in-the-sky solution. Uh, yes, and Ann, to your point about the teacher lot being two-thirds of the that's absolutely uh, we did that uh, four years ago in an effort to make the building safe so there's one entry for all the students so they could come around that uh, southeast side. But if we do another lot there, we're going to take advantage of that by opening up those northwest doors for zero-hour students. So we can maximize that parking and get students in that lot with a plan to do that just for zero hours. But as far as the actual traffic flow, it, it's been a, it, it is a zoo I totally understand that, but I just see that as uh, the, 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 the solution that just, to me, makes sense because, you know, we spent a lot of hours out there at different times, too, is that solution to 91. Now, having said that, that may not be something that you were willing to fund at this time, but that's really the solution. I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand the part about the zero hour and okay. the parking. Yeah, I skimmed over that. A couple of us have been in on that those meetings, but... Karen, there was talk about adding an additional parking lot by the administrative buildings for students. If we do that, we will be able to utilize all of the spots in the existing teacher lot and the new lot, and we would open up those west entry main doors kind of there on the northwest side to oh zero-hour students, and those doors would then be locked at 735 so to prevent any safety issues at that time. And then all students after 735 would come in through the, the southeast entrance, like they currently do. But isn't the big time when people come in at what, the first hour? I yeah, mean, it is. But I mean, like this year, yes, but like next year, we're, I think we're slated to have eight zero-hour classes. So if you just figure an average of 25 students, you know, that's 200 students right there. How and many do we have zero this year? kids drive. How many do we have this year, zero-hour? I think there's 12. We're not looking to cut those. It's just the way the, the schedule works. I mean, we're working on the master schedule now, but the way that works is if kids don't request it, you know, we can't have it. So we're going to have fewer zero hour classes. Yes, next the way year. it looks right now, the way the numbers are lining up, yes, we'd have zero, fewer zero hour classes next year. So that seems like the traffic problem would be worse. <laughs> but I guess. Yeah, but not if we have a lot and we move them all to that northwest side. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just saying. If more we don't, kids coming yes, in first hour. Time. Yeah, we and I would. think we're getting a little bit into the weeds. That's yeah. what we're hiring these guys for yeah. to tell us how to handle that. But I just, I just wanted to know what Dr. Adrian's opinions were about doing this now versus holding off. I think, I mean, like Cheryl mentioned, I think it makes sense that if you're if you're doing that now with the with the conjunction of the construction uh, of the office facility and the parking lot there, it makes sense to tie that all in together and take advantage of that opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Adrian. Yep. All right. I understand the confusion here between the 12,500 and the, the uh, 18,000. Um, working in schools and getting bids, of course, we always want to go for the lowest bid, but I'm not too sure the bids are comparable. And um, I know that it needs to be done. We I agree with uh, the fact that there have been a lot of near misses and not real clear traffic patterns. I, I do understand uh, the concern about us taking the lowest responsible bid. But I also have to say that with the swimming pool and Mike and, and Teresa with, with you being uh, doing this for a living, I, I, I trust that your judgment is clear. 
and you saved us a lot of money with the pool. Uh, Tom was able to get us uh, good bids with the with the uh, recent expenditures that we're looking for in the pool. So I'm I'm going to have to agree with trusting you on this one, Mike. And I, I'm sure that this will be a more detailed study. I'm going to trust by you saying that it is that it, that that we're we're doing the right thing here. So I'm willing to support the study if we can get it done, but the traffic flow patterns, of course, will have to wait until fall. So it's kind of a difficult choice between the, the two different bids with me not knowing uh, the difference in the two bids clearly, but I, I do know that you know what you're doing in this regard. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and agree so that we can get this done. I agree with Ann, it needs to be done. So I will support it. Um, so that we can get it done now. So I guess I need to have a motion to approve the traffic study. As I think there's a, a motion and a second on the uh, tabling it. So I think you have to vote on that first by. Yeah, you rule. had a motion and a second on to, which table. to table but it. So that'll Mr. be Wagenbach made voted on. And then if you want to do something else, a second motion will need right. to be made. And Mr. Wagenbaugh has another comment. I mean, so just table it. I think it is the same thing as what you're talking about. We're just going to do part of it now. We're tabling this proposal, but we're going to do part of it. So I'm not, I'm not trying to say we're not doing nothing. Right. So you're saying you want to approve the $18,000 and maybe they'll get to the traffic study. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just do or some other part. I guess I'm not sure what we're going to vote for here. I thought they were doing the traffic study. They can't. There's no traffic. So they're not going to. In the fall. In the fall? When they, you know. Students come back in the fall. If the school closure is extended, the students will come back in the fall and they can study the traffic patterns in the fall. Wait, so are, are we. There's no urgency tonight, I guess, since we're not going to do anything. If that's what you're telling me, but that's what I didn't know. I, if, the, if it's the board's will that we go ahead with this study and the circulation analysis and the parking lot analysis, then I'll, I'll clarify who, with who, whoever it is that we pick. And, that, that all of that is included in their report. But what I think Tara is saying is we can't do the traffic study now because there's no traffic, so we'll have to make assumptions and bring back to you what we think can be done with the parking, with the circulation, potential access points. But then um, they'd have to do the actual counts in the fall just to verify their assumptions. That's the way I understand it. Did you ever talk to Dave Wright or not? I'm sorry. sorry. Did you ever talk to Dave Wright or not? The other one from the red. No. So no. I honestly, uh, I think they're both all professionals. I know. Um, I also know that a lot of this is is connection. To people. Um, we're not going to be able to pay for an excess from that one anytime soon. So if we're going to have it sooner than later, then, then we would need some help from federal government, state government, county, and those parties that have those connect the, the greatest connections are the one that can most likely get that done, uh, if it's at all possible. Um, so. Well, this, if we do this now, will this affect the, um, the black topping? If we're going to widen roads and such? No. Okay. Um, building a new parking lot. Because if this is getting seal cleared, then it's going to get restriped and need re arrow too. And that's what she wants to maybe have her arrows uh -huh. know where her arrows are going to point to on the new stripe, on the new blacktop. Well, I don't think we should be putting stripe. Well, I guess that's getting in the weeds, but you don't want to put those arrows outside the building close to Grange Hall Road when everybody's going both directions anyway. So that's why I think the engineer can probably give you some heads up on where your arrows would go before you stripe them, you know, because you're going to black top roads. Anyway, right. it's tied on, probably not an $18,000 job. I think it could be less if they would reconsider and maybe we won't need that traffic study. I don't know. You can vote on it. You can vote on it the other way too. I don't care. I'll support the traffic study. I just thought it was going to wait. So, Tim, do you want to, um, you can remove your motion if the second agrees to remove you know, they're trying to come in their $10,000 in this area. You know, it's an era. So they said, I'm already got $10,000 in this, so I'm just a little bit afraid that they're going to. I can't hear, I can't hear Tim. Okay, can you say that again? 
That, I won't say it again. Okay. I'll, I'll pull back that motion. That's okay. Okay, do um, to clarify, you're withdrawing the motion to table. Okay. And Adrian said we can I'll remove my second. We can still consider staggering. He just Adrian wrote a note and I couldn't see the rest of it. All right, I'm going to take control of this. I leave let's have a motion or not a motion to approve the traffic study. I move to approve the traffic study with Terra Engineering as designed. There's a second. I'll set up my any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Holthauser? Aye. Wisdom? Aye. Aye. Dishroom? Aye. Henry? Aye. Humbles? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Information regarding Fortress Bank liquidity management is included in the packet. Are there any questions? Uh, Dr. Humbles, I have spoken with Troy McCreary this week and asked him if he would be able to present his information in April, and that is fine by him, and I think it makes sense for us under the current conditions. We wouldn't make a move until the end of the fiscal year anyway, so we are afforded the luxury of time here. Okay, so we'll just move this just move on. Yep. All right, very good. I will. Can I say that I support this very much? I think these things are moving strongly in the right direction for our economics, so thank you for initiating that, Dr. Jim. Very good. This concludes the action portion of the meeting. Send me a motion to go closed. Could I please have a motion to adjourn to closed session? I move to adjourn to closed session for the following purposes stated in the Open Meetings Act, the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, student disciplinary cases, collective negotiating matters, discussion of minutes of meetings all closed, purchase or lease of real property, security procedures, and litigation. Hey, can I interrupt real quick? Sure. Um, before we do that, can we jump to the approval of human resources consent and approval of closed session? Because once I close this, I close the meeting. Sure. And I'm not sure how it, I would tie the videos back together of two separate meetings. It's very good. Could I please have a motion to approve the human resource consent agenda? What is the human resource consent agenda? It's the people that we. Okay. Can you okay. speak up? What is it again? It's the PAR, the PAR report. Okay. I move to approve the human resource consent agenda as presented. Okay. Mrs. Dishroom and Ms. Holthauser. Very good. Roll call. Dishroom? Aye. Holthauser? Humbles? Wagenbach? Wisdom? Aye. Bluth? Aye. Could I have a motion to approve the closed section of minutes? You forgot, Henry. Henry. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Just imagine the private comments that are going on. I know. <laughs> Forgive us for the start. <laughs> All right. All right. I have a motion to approve the closed session minutes. Very good. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Bluth? Cheryl? Aye. Aye. He's coming. Okay. Dishroom? Aye. Henry? Aye. Holzhauser? Aye. Humbles? Aye. Wagenbach? Aye. Wisdom? Aye. Very good. Motion carried. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Do I have to do that motion again? Yes. Do you want to close session? Okay. I move to adjourn to closed session for the following purposes as stated in the Open Meetings Act. The appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, student disciplinary cases, collective negotiating matters, discussion of minutes of meetings lawfully closed, purchase or lease of real property, security procedures, and litigation. Okay. Your second. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call. Dishroom. Aye. Wisdom. Aye. Bluth. Aye. Henry. Aye. Holzhauser. Humbles. Before I say aye, I think, I think in the past we have decided we don't have to follow to one of those. So we can take that oh. off. Mm -hmm. And then right here, of course, it says, could I have a motion to adjourn the closed session? Can you move that up to 
before the actual closed session. Yes. That way, I was going to be very Okay. And can we stay in this room? Yes, we can. Hey, Ann. Yeah. I'm going to uh, close this session and then I'm going to send you an invite to rejoin a new one. And I'm going to. And Cheryl, too. Yes. Okay. That sounds okay. good. Okay, thank you. So give us time to get a drink of water.